everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, so happy to see you here. My name's Kat, I live in the UK and I make planning and reading content for YouTube. And today we have a very exciting video for you because it's my first ever unhaul. I've been making reading content for like a year, year and a half and I have never unhauled a book. They have all sat in a pile in my living room waiting to be unhauled. And finally, <laughs> I've decided I'm gonna do it. Yesterday, I finally took all the photos, I made a vintage store and listed all the books on there. And amazingly, a lot of them have already sold. So I need to hurry up and film this video to get these books out to their new homes. So if you are interested in picking up any of these books, if you head to the description, my vintage store will be listed there. Thank you so much for checking it out. So the books are in a mix of categories. In the main, these are books I have read and either enjoyed, but don't think I'll reread or I didn't love so much, weren't for me and I'm gonna be getting rid. I have a few books I haven't read. I prefer to read books before I get rid of them but there are just a few I acknowledge my reading tastes have changed it's okay if yours has as well so I will be getting rid of those ones and I think I have one duplicate possibly or a couple of duplicates so we'll go over those as well this is like 60 plus books which is great I am hoping that this will inspire me to get rid of a few more books I have definitely fallen into the commercial side of booktube where you buy every book under the sun whether you've read it or not I have way too many books on my tbr so I'm hoping that by doing a little clear out it will encourage me to read some more of my books either to keep them or get rid of them or just to kind of be a bit more intentional about the books that are in my home. Hopefully this is going to be a fresh start for me. Before we get started I do want to say that if any of your favourite books are in here I'm sorry but reading the joy of reading is that everybody has different tastes and it's okay if these weren't for me I am glad that they worked so well for you. Okay so first off let's start with books that I read and enjoyed but don't feel a need to keep them. So we'll start with middle grade so first up I have Scandal and the Unicorn Thief by A.F. Stedman. This is the Waterstones edition the like first printing edition which has red sprayed edges and the hardcover of this it's glorious it's so cool it's gold foil it's really cool and it is signed by the author as well i picked this up because it's kind of been um mused as being like the new harry potter uh so you know harry potter for this generation and i don't think that it's quite there but i do think it's really enjoyable the reason i'm not keeping it is i actually listened to this on audio i've listened to the second one on audio as well so i don't think i need to keep these books physically because i would always just listen to them on audio so i'm hoping that somebody else will really like this one because it doesn't really kind of avoid difficult themes it has a lot of kind of examinations of death and people turning on you when you don't expect it it has panic attack rep which is somebody who has panic attacks is like this is probably the first book that i've read that accurately displays panic attacks as i have them so really like the panic attack rep we well you know <laughs> the panic attacks are obviously not great but you know what i mean um also skandar the main character is really in touch with his emotions so i really like that side of it as well so i think this is a really genuinely good book <laughs> i would really recommend it uh basically it's about skandar who lives on the mainland and there are islanders who have unicorns and when everyone hits 13 on the island and the mainland they are able to basically test to see if they were born to be a unicorn rider and skandar is turning 13 at the beginning of the first book something doesn't quite go right uh and so he is kind of not necessarily going to be getting a unicorn and then maybe is getting a unicorn and then it's all about there's a lot of kind of political stuff going on linked to the unicorns it's very interesting it's a poor explanation but very interesting hopefully somebody will enjoy this next up i have like a charm by l mcnichol this is the first in a duology with like a curse this is again one i really enjoyed this is about ramya who feels like a real outcast in her family and she then kind of following her granddad's death ends up going to edinburgh and discovering that there's a hidden magical world there and maybe she's not as much of an outcast as she thought she was i loved the first one four stars I did not enjoy the second one. I listened to the second one on audio. That may have been the downfall. I think that the audiobook narrator made Ramya maybe sound even more kind of uh, <laughs> whingy, maybe. Uh, whereas I really didn't feel that in the first one. I really, really liked Ramya. But in the second one, I felt she was very woe is me. Uh, but again, these are not for me. These are middle grade books. And especially the first one, I think is well worth a read for that age group. But having not particularly enjoyed the second one, I don't feel a need to keep these now. And I think that the actual age, somebody in the actual age group will enjoy them more. Next up, moving into my YAs, we have Well, That Was Unexpected by Jessie Cusick 
Canto. This is a really fun book about Charlotte and George. Charlotte's basically caught in a compromised position with her boyfriend and her mum decides to ship her back to her home country of Indonesia to kind of learn how to be a little bit more respectable. George is from a family in Indonesia that is quite prolific, particularly in business, and both of their parents catfish them to end up dating each other. And they realise this, but agree to fake date because it would be really good for George's image if they do that. It's fun. It's just not one I will reread. And again, it's obviously aimed more for a YA audience, but I definitely think this one's a good time. And this cover is like one of my favourite things of all time. Speaking of YA covers that are some of my favourite of all time, this is A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Namey. This is honestly one of my favourite covers ever 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 uh but I, but again this is one that I just wouldn't reread even though I had a good time this is another one where <laughs> a, a teenager is shipped off to another country this is uh Leela and she has like a really bad breakup with her boyfriend she has a falling out with her best friend she effectively has a mental breakdown so her parents send her to her aunt in England and she is supposed to be like working there for the summer. She meets this guy called Orion who has other family troubles and it kind of goes from there. And it's it's very cute. It's just Laura Taylor Naomi's writing style wasn't quite for me. I found it really hard every time I put the book down to get back into it. It just took me quite a while. But again, this is fun. As I say, one of my favorite covers ever and was really genuinely very hard to get rid of because of that. But it's okay, I'm gonna be strong. <laughs> And in the last of this category, we have Loveless by Alice Oseman. So if you are new to my channel, I am a massive Alice Oseman fan, particularly for the Heartstopper series. Those graphic novels became a part of my personality uh, last year. I love the show. I love everything about it. They are my absolute favourite books. I don't enjoy Alice's stories as much in written form. This is not going to be the only uh, Alice Oseman <laughs> book in this unhaul. Um, but I did enjoy Loveless. I listened to it on audio though. So again, I don't feel a need to own the physical copy because I don't think this is one I would reread. But if I did, I would just listen to the audio. Loveless is about Georgia who really, really wants to be in a romantic relationship, but for some reason just it's not happening for her. And she ends up discovering through the process of going to university, through various kind of failed relationships, that actually relationships are not for her. And it's about the kind of discovery of what does it mean to be loveless? This has very good asexual representation. Again, I think there are other people who could enjoy this story. I am definitely a firm believer that Alice Oseman's books, I wish that they'd been out when I was a young adult. I think that particularly the Heartstopper series, but would have really helped a lot of my friends in coming out, in discovering their sexuality. I think these books are really important. I really enjoyed Loveless. I gave it four stars. I just don't think I would reread it now knowing how the story went. And also if I reread it, I really enjoyed the audio. So I would just listen to the audio book. Okay, now let's go to my adult romances, which I have read, which is my, and enjoyed, which is my biggest category. <laughs> um, because if you don't know, I'm mostly a romance reader. So first up we have Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey. This is a duplicate. <laughs> so I loved this novella. I'm a big fan of Tessa Bailey, particularly the Bellinger Sisters duology. I think window shopping is so great. It's maybe even my favourite of all of them. Like, particularly because the novella is obviously being a novella, is quite short. It packs so much story in here. The main character, whose name I can never remember because it's not on the back, um, she has just come out of prison and she's chatting to a guy, she doesn't know who he is, about the window dressing in this department store. And then he reveals that he works there and she should apply to be a window dresser for the Christmas season. And there's so much backstory for both the characters. There's really good spicy scenes if you like that sort of thing, which I do. It's just really good. But I got this in a blind date with a book unboxing, having already bought the book. So don't need it. <laughs> but yeah, this one's going to a good home. This one's already sold. So great stuff. <laughs> and uh, the person that bought that one also bought this one, which is A Merry Little Meet Cute by Julie Murphy and Sierra Simone. This is the first in the what's the series called? Christmas Town or something like that. But it's basically about B, who is a sex worker. And she, the, the guy that she produces content for also owns like a Hallmark Christmas movie company. He needs her to go and do a Christmas Hallmark movie that year instead. And the person that she's acting opposite was like her crush boy band singer. 
uh and so it's just about that it's incredibly spicy <laughs> as you might expect if you like that sort of thing um i thought it was too long uh but i did enjoy it and i have the sequel on ebook it's not one i think i need to own physically because i really don't think i would reread it but i think this is a really good time and i hope the person that is going to enjoys it next i have two books in the uh written in the stars series by alexandra belfler this is written in the stars and count your lucky stars these are some of my favorite covers ever and i feel really gutted to be getting rid of these but i am keeping the second one which is hang the moon it's probably somewhere behind me uh but this is the first and third so this trilogy i was about to say trilogy <laughs> tri trilogy is covering basically uh a different different friendship group in each one it's it's kind of friends but for the modern day in a way and it's queer so again we love that rep and written in the stars is about darcy and l and they're set up on a date they don't have a great time but they end up fake dating because they're both trying to avoid needing to be in a relationship and it goes from there the second one obviously i won't talk about because i'm keeping that one but Oh, one of my favourite books ever. And then Count Your Lucky Stars is about Elle's best friend, Margot. And this one is a second chance romance where she ends up uh, rekindling her relationship with her teenage crush, Olivia. So these are a good time. It's just, I I wasn't just, I wasn't obsessed with these two. Uh, but as I say, the second one is like, one of my favorite books ever <laughs> next up we have the stand-in by lily chu this is one of my favorite covers ever this is drawn by lini kaufman who is one of the most beautiful book illustrators in in work right now i honestly there's so many books i've picked up just because lini drew the cover i didn't know lini back then but that is why i picked up this book because look at this cover and also this is a princess and the pauper retelling and uh, I have a version of The Princess and the Pauper by Kate O'Brien, I think, which is like one of my favourite books when I was younger. So I really wanted to pick this up, but I actually listened to it on audio because I'm pretty sure the audiobook is free as part of an Audible subscription. And it's read by Philippa Sue, who is Eliza in the Hamilton that's on Disney+. Plus. So um, I think I probably should have read it physically. I actually don't love Philippa Sue as an audiobook narrator, but also I think this story just doesn't do enough for me. This is a kind of three-star read. There's no spice and... I don't love a romance with no spice, <laughs> I'm afraid to say. I I feel like if a book is putting that much investment into love and romance, I do want at least one spicy scene in there. And this had like one chaste kiss. Uh, but it's a kind of fun, it's a fun retelling of Princess and the Pauper because Gracie is, she has this kind of really horrible backstory actually, uh, but she is one day just at a coffee shop and this girl who looks exactly like her pulls up in a limo and is like, come with me. And then, the, the um, Fong Li is an actress and so she basically pays Gracie to be her in uh, kind of public engagements so that Gracie can have, so that, sorry, that Fong Li can have a bit of a break. So it's a really fun concept. And we have Italy Ever After by Leonie Mack. I picked this up in the works, which is a, a book shop. Well, it doesn't just sell books, it kind of sells crafty things and stuff here in the UK. But I picked up this book because it was massively discounted and it was and also we went on holiday to Italy last Christmas, uh, well, last December. So I thought I would pick this up to read there. This is a fun time. And again, I read it while I was in Italy. I'm pretty sure, I, did I read it on ebook though? <laughs> I think I read it on ebook. Um, this is a really fun book. Uh, I just won't reread it, but this was a fun time. It's about a woman who goes with her daughter to a kind of band camp and then ends up falling in love with the music teacher. It was fun just won't reread. Then we have The Roommate by Rosie Danen. So this is the first in a duology and I haven't read the second one yet but again it's one I just don't think I will reread. This is about Clara who moves across the country to be with her uh, best friend who she's been in love with her whole life and then as soon as she gets there he's already left to go on tour with his band and left her with a stranger and the stranger is a sex worker but he is not working currently because he's fallen out with the production company and so he's not working and he's trying to figure out what he's going to do and him and Clara end up making a website that helps women to kind of discover their sexual awakening and kind of how to pleasure themselves basically uh yeah it was fun it's incredibly spicy do not recommend reading for your commutes but it's a good time i just won't reread i really need to get to the second one next up i have the merry christmas project by kathy bramley this is what i would deem as a kind of typical british romance where it's very cute and it's set at christmas there's no spice but it was fun it's about mary who 
it moves to this town and she ends up living in the house of a guy who it, like obviously is her landlord but they like met at another point and she kind of fancied him and then he ends up being her landlord and there's sort of a, a christmas project that they're doing in town <laughs> think hallmark movie christmas project that they're doing in town and mary and i think his name is cole yeah christmas names uh get involved in and they fall in love through the process very cute will not reread this has a sequel which i think i would like to pick up on ebook um but again i i don't think i would reread this one Next up, we have Spoiler Alert by Olivia Dade. This is, again, a spicy romance about a woman who writes fan fiction about a sort of Game of Thrones style TV show. And she is plus size. She is kind of ends up getting through the mill on Twitter. I can't quite remember. I read this one a, a while ago, but she's posting about it on Twitter. And then people are being really rude about her on Twitter in the way that people are, if anybody is plus size. And the guy that is features in a lot of her fan fiction this guy is actually the main actor in the show but she doesn't know that and so he ends up taking her out on a date that she kind of thinks is a pity date but it's not a pity date uh, i'm not explaining this one well at all but i really really loved the idea of this because i love that kind of like writing fan fiction trope and these two actually chat on their like fan fiction site but they don't know each other and then they meet in person and they're not sure about it but like it's i love the idea the spicy scenes are a little bit what I would call like traditional spicy scenes, like a little bit, you know, they're not an Ali Hazelwood. They're like uh, the epitome of perfect sex, which is actually not what I want to read in books. I like Ali Hazelwood's sex scenes that are don't always go well and they're a little bit clumsy because I actually think that's much more realistic. Uh, whereas with this, it was like perfect sex every time and the terminology used is not the terminology I would prefer to read in my spicy scenes, but a lot of people really love this book. I also don't like the UK cover. I really like the US cover, which is drawn by Lini Kaufman. So obviously I love it, but the US cover actually reflects, what is her name? Uh, April as fat, which is what she's called in the book. This is just curvy and that's like not the point of this book so i don't like the uk cover for that reason <laughs> next up we have the flat share by beth o'leary you probably have heard of this because it's a very popular book and was made into a tv show for paramount which i've watched nowhere near as good as the book uh what a waste of my time <laughs> but anyway so the flat share is about tiffy who has a breakup with a boyfriend who's really really toxic justin is grim and she needs somewhere to live so she but she really doesn't have any money so she ends up basically moving in with this guy called Leon, but they occupy the same flat and the same bed at different times. So she has it at night and he works as a nurse on night shifts. So he occupies it during the day and sleeps then. And it's about the two of them not knowing each other and meeting each other through post-it notes. And Leon has a girlfriend and how does that fit into the fact that there's another girl sleeping in his bed? And this was really good. I really enjoyed it. Four stars. I just do not think I will reread this. Like I know the story. I know what happens. I don't think I would reread it, but it's very fun. Next up, we have the first two books in the Bright Force series by Ashley Herring Blake. That is The Lila Green Doesn't Care and Astro Parker Doesn't Fail. These covers are drawn by Leanie Kaufman. They are beautiful. I've kept the Delilah Green book for longer than I should have done um, because of it being drawn by Leanie. Like, the, I love the purple. I love the cover. These are three and a half star books for me. I just, there's something about Ashley Herring Blake's writing that doesn't quite work for me. And I'm so gutted about it. I did give Iris Kelly four stars. I like that one the most, but ironically, that's the one I got as an arc. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't own that one physically, but I don't feel a need to own it physically because I'm not planning to complete the set. But yeah, unfortunately, this one just doesn't, it, it's not my favourite, but lots of people love these books. So definitely pick them up if they sound interesting. So all three of them are sapphic. In Delilah Green, we have Delilah who moves back to Bright Falls. She doesn't get on with her stepsister, Astrid. She doesn't um, get on with her, her stepmom either, but she's been asked to come back to photograph Astrid's wedding. And she ends up kind of rekindling a, a crush that she had on Astra's best friend, Claire, which is what that one's about. Um, I'm not going to talk about what Astra Parker is about because I do think it's a spoiler uh, <laughs> following on from the first book. But anyway, these are a good time. I'm pretty sure both of these have already sold on my Vinted. And then the last of the adult romances that I enjoyed but won't read again is The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. This cover is so beautiful. This is the second in a series. I don't think you need to read the first one, but it does reference the first one in this book. So I guess just be aware of that if you decide to go straight in with the second one. This one is about Daisy. She was in love with her 
brother's best friend when they were young but he ups and leaves for no reason she doesn't know why and then 10 years later he's back in her life at a conference where she is presenting for the company she works for she doesn't want to see him she doesn't want to talk to him but her aunts are there trying to set her up with like random boys and her ex-boyfriend is there with his new girlfriend or fiance and so her and Liam kind of agree to fake date, well, not fake date, but they like pretend they're together just for like two minutes to get these people off Daisy's back. Liam then says to her, actually, I could do with a proper fake dating marriage if possible, because my granddad it has passed away and is going to give me his distillery, but only if I can remain married to somebody for a year. So that's what it's about. And it's spicy, good time, good writing. I just don't feel I need to reread it. But this cover is beautiful and not having this on my rainbow shelves is kind of devastating. But I've got to a point where I cannot keep books for that reason. <laughs> okay, let's move to the Mm, I was going to say adult fantasies, but to be honest, I think two of them are YA. So anyway, YA and adult fantasies. First up, we have the Fairy Loot edition of Belladonna by Adelyn Grace. I love Belladonna, gave it four stars, but I listened to it on audio. And I've also listened to Foxglove on audio and I don't own Foxglove physically and I don't feel a need to reread this. It's not my favourite Fairy Loot edition ever. So I've decided that I'm okay to part with it. Um, but so I'll give you a little bit of a tour. So this is the cover. I do have the um artwork I don't think this one is sold yet it has so many favorites like people have favorited it before I even listed anything else um but this is the cover see it's not my favorite cover ever and it's got no reversible art on the dust jacket it's got gorgeous end papers though like this is um Signa and Death and these are the sprayed edges I love the sprayed edges and we've got different end paper art of Death and Signa on the back so I think it's beautiful it's just not my favorite like it's got no foiling on the hard covers and um this is actually not my favorite cover of this book I like the US cover I can't get it back on yeah I actually prefer the the cover with the person um so anyway I'm happy to part with it because I don't feel a need to complete the set but I'm sure that somebody will love this one so this is about Signa who has always been haunted by death people she's loved or haven't loved have left her she sees ghosts and she does it all spirits and she doesn't really know why. She then ends up being sent to kind of the final house that will host her. And when she's there, um, she realises that once again, death is going to plague her. And she thinks that she is going to lose her cousin, Blythe. And she ends up meeting death while she's at the name of the house. I cannot remember, Foxglove. Um, and it goes from there. <laughs> it's a, it's a basically a you know person and death romance it's really good it's spicy but that's not the focus it has a good mixture of fantasy and romance it's super gothic it's super moody I really enjoyed it I also really enjoyed Fox Club a lot of people didn't enjoy Fox Club but I think it's fine I don't really understand what everybody's issue is but yeah I really really like the audiobooks for these so that's how I would consume them but yeah if you are interested Belladonna will be on my vintage as long as it hasn't sold by the time you watch this video <laughs> then let's do the other YA that I read and thought was fine but won't keep so this is Serpent and Dove by Shelby Maharin this is one of the first books that I read when I started making book content and I do have a reading vlog for it up on my channel uh I will find it very difficult to tell you what this is about because it was so long ago but it's basically about a witch and a witch hunter that end up in an arranged marriage and I don't know if they know that they're a witch and a witch hunter when that happens that's basically what it's about it's the first in a trilogy I do own blood and honey but it's in a different pile so we'll talk about that when we get there but yeah it's so chunky and I gave it three and a half stars when I read it but I really hadn't read a lot of books then and I don't think this is a three and a half stars it's like a three stars um and I don't think I need to carry on with this series and if I do I think I'd be fine to carry on with it either on audio or on ebook I think this is just unnecessary to keep on my shelves because they're so big and to be honest I really don't think I will carry on with it but this is a very popular book so <laughs> The last in the fantasy category is Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. So everyone knows what this is. This is a cosy fantasy about Viv who opens a coffee shop. I gave this four stars because I, I think I was with the hype. Like everyone loves this book, okay? Everyone thinks this book is like one of the best things ever written. And I felt like I also needed to think that. And there are some books where I rate them slightly higher because of hype, which is... I don't like that. Anyway, so I gave this four stars. This is a three star for me, everyone. And I'm sorry about that. I got the arc of Bookshops and Bone Dust and I really didn't like it. I gave that two stars, but really it's a one star. I can acknowledge that these are well-written, but also nothing happens. 
and it's just about a character opening a coffee shop i cozy fantasy is not for me okay that's i'm gonna i'm not gonna go into a massive rant about it but cozy fantasy is not for me and this version is like the the original us cover that i got imported so i'm sure somebody will like this i don't think it's sold yet but i'm sure that somebody will love it um and i feel i felt really weird about getting rid of it because i actually do really love the cover but i don't i won't reread it and i won't carry on with the series if it becomes a series okay so then we have murder mystery category so i have two books in this which is murder at the house on the hill and murder at the summer fate by victoria walters these are british cozy mysteries about nancy and her grandma jane i think and they live in a town called deadly end which is very sleepy and nothing happens until a murder happens at the house on the hill and they end up getting involved in it and having to figure out who did it and then at the summer fate kind of takes a bit of a a, a, a move away it's not really linked to the first one but the third one which is murder at the church or something like that which i do own um that one goes back to the story of the first one so i've only read these two so far but i've decided to unhaul them because i don't think i will reread these ultimately but you know they're fun uh and i think somebody else will really enjoy them because they're, they're easy reads quick to go through it's not my favorite writing style ever um but i'm like intrigued to keep reading but i think i will probably switch to the audiobook or the ebook sorry for these going forward but the covers are so beautiful um and victoria is a really lovely person i follow her on instagram so right now finally the last up i think of books i've actually read which is some graphic novels and manga that i'm getting rid of um so first up we have romantic killer volume one by wataro momos this is a full color manga it's beautiful uh about a character who she just likes playing video games and hanging out with her cat she's really not interested in having a relationship on like the first page she gets sucked into a video game or into a video world or something an alternate reality where she is required to repopulate the world and so they make her fall like in these kind of typical romance tropes with this guy um and then i won't spoil what happens at the end but um it's if you look at the back it would be kind of obvious but anyway so yeah it's basically about her getting thrown into these romantic situations with this guy this is fun right i had a really fun time reading this but i don't need to collect the series and i won't reread it i'm gonna try and read the rest on ebook i'm pretty sure i could get them on ebook from my library or i thought i could but then when i looked yesterday i couldn't um so we'll see how that goes but i or i'll just buy them on kindle or something i don't think i need the physical copy of these but um this was really fun <laughs> um and i'm intrigued to see where the series goes from here then we have I'm Kind of Chubby and I'm Your Hero by Noor, which I picked up on a complete whim. Well, I did with this one as well. I knew nothing about them. Um, I just picked it up from Forbidden Planet. And this is about Ponjiru, who is a rookie actor and he's just trying to make his way and everyone else has fans, but he doesn't have any fans. And then he starts getting these baked goods dropped on his doorstep or like at the theatre and he doesn't know who's sending them. And then it turns out that it's this guy who, who works in the bakery who just thinks his acting is amazing. And it's a very cute like uplifting story about these two guys who are just kind of lifting each other up and rooting for each other it's very cute but it's currently a duology and I've read some reviews for the second one and I know that these books don't have to be romances but I love romance and that's what I want to read and this doesn't go in the direction I thought it would I am um, I thought this was going to give Heartstopper vibes and it didn't quite do that so I've decided I'm not going to carry on with the series but this is super cute it's very cute art um so I'm sure that somebody will enjoy this and then last up I have The Many Deaths of Layla Star by Ram V this is about uh a, a god who well the god of death who is basically made redundant <laughs> from the gods because they don't they're basically they say that somebody on earth is going to find a cure to dying and therefore they don't need death or don't need as many deaths i'm unclear if if layla is the only death or multiple deaths but anyway made redundant and is basically kind of told to go and live out a mortal life on earth in the body of somebody who's just died and layla which is the name of the human person rather than death but layla then doesn't want to she wants her job back as death she, does, she doesn't want to live a mortal life so she goes to seek out the, the guy who is going to come up with the cure for death and she dies multiple times and comes back to life and each time she's searching for the guy who is going to you know cheat death basically and it's about that story it's a magical realism story it's very interesting it's quite a short read uh it's got cute art um i 
I find Layla an interesting character um, and that it didn't quite go in that direction that I expected. Um, but it's an interesting story. It's just really not one I would reread. Okay, now we're going to move into books I didn't love so much. So first off, we're going to go into my one DNF here because everything else I've DNF'd is an ebook. My one physical DNF which is Ariadne by Jennifer Sane. I was attempting to read this for nearly two years and I finally got to a point where I realised it's okay that even though this cover is glorious, I don't need to enjoy this book. This is a Greek retelling of the story of Ariadne and King Midas. I got 17% into it. I do not like the writing style. I wasn't engaged in the story. It just wasn't for me and that is fine. <laughs> but the cover one of my favourites ever. So now let's go to books I did finish but either didn't like or was disappointed by. So first up we have Love in Winter Wonderland by Abiola Bello. So this is a YA about Ariel and Trey and they are working in a bookshop together to try and save it. This one I think for the YA audience that it's intended for will probably really work. It's a black owned bookshop and I really liked that side of it. Honestly, the reason I didn't love this was because I didn't know they were, I didn't know this book was British and I didn't know that the um, British sixth form experience that was talked about in here was going to be so close to my own sixth form experience. I don't need to relive that. <laughs> so that was why I didn't love it. But again, I think that the, for the intended audience, I'm sure this one would be really enjoyed. Then we have You, Me and Our Heartstrings by Melissa C. I was gutted not to enjoy this more. This is about, it's Daisy, isn't it? Yeah, Daisy and Noah. So Daisy and Noah are both musicians. They're both trying to get into Juilliard, I think, and they end up playing together in a video that goes viral. And it's about how they deal with the fame. I say that, that's what the blurb says, but actually this viral video doesn't happen until way later in the book. And a lot of it is about Daisy hating on her parents for working too hard to afford their flat in New York. And Noah kind of battling with his anxiety. As somebody with anxiety, I enjoyed the anxiety rep. Daisy has cerebral palsy. I can't speak to that uh, as, as to how good that rep is. Uh, but I do think Noah's anxiety rep was pretty good. He maybe got put on antidepressants a little bit quickly um, without exploring other options. But it just, again, this is more intended for the audience that it's meant for. But the pacing of this, I just didn't like. And I didn't like the way Daisy was with her parents. And that is probably because... I'm old. <laughs> then we have a book that I am so gutted I didn't enjoy. This is Nick and Charlie by Alice Oseman. This is a novella that is set around book five, the, the fifth graphic novel, which is about Nick getting ready to go to university and Charlie not loving that. I think that the plot of this is kind of essential for six formers to read. I, as somebody who was in a relationship with somebody and went off, and I was the year older, I was the Nick, and I went to uni the year before my boyfriend then did. And I do actually think it's a really important thing to write about, you know, you think that this person's going to be the love of your life, but you need to go and explore your university journey anyway. Um, and if if the relationship doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. You can't change your whole life for this person you think you'll end up with. And you might or you might not. Um, I think that's so important. What I didn't like about this was Nick and Charlie fought for most of it. And I just didn't, I didn't feel that this was how Nick and Charlie would speak to each other. And I know that Alice obviously knows them better than I do <laughs> because they're her characters. But I just, I didn't like the way that Nick or Charlie were represented in this book. So um, I'm going to just pretend this one doesn't exist. And to be honest, I'll be glad when it's out of my life. I, I, I don't know whether graphic novel six is going to cover what is in here it will be interesting to see if it does because I loved five even though it starts to explore these themes I really really enjoyed five I think that Nick and Charlie are better served in graphic novel form for me then we have The Strange Case of the Alchemist Daughter by Theodora Goss. I'm gutted to get rid of this because it's one of my favorite covers ever and this is a beautiful floppy edition uh but this is um basically about like the daughters of like Jekyll and Hyde and Frankenstein and Dr Moreau uh all women who are trying to kind of solve mysteries and stop their horrible fathers from creating more monsters and things like that this book is told in a really interesting format where the girls are writing it as a book about their experience and so they interject and interrupt while Catherine Moreau is writing the story and I don't like the interruptions. <laughs> I don't think that they add to the story in the way that th that's what other people love about this. I personally didn't like them. 
but also you know that the stakes are not as high as they should be because you know the characters are alive because they are reflecting on it so unfortunately I didn't love this I enjoyed the first one fine the second one European Travels of the Monstrous Gentlewoman is one of the longest books I have ever read it's like 700 pages I listened to it on audio it did not need to be that long in any stretch of the imagination I will finish the series out I will listen to the third one on audio but I don't this is just not a series I need to own physically unfortunately now let's move into the adult romances so first we have Love Lessons in Starcross Valley by Lucy Knott I actually read this on ebook uh, rather than physically I love the cover though gutted to get rid of this but this is about uh Marnie yeah Marnie who has a really horrible breakup goes to Canada to travel on a complete whim and meets this woman called Nora who she really gets on with but you know it the the, the friendship or whatever it is she doesn't think it's going to carry on when she moves back to the UK and then Nora ends up being transferred to work at the museum in the town that Marnie lives in or whatever and this one wasn't really a romance it was much more of an explanation about the grief of a breakup and this breakup was horrible um but also about Marnie looks after a neurodiversion child she's a teaching assistant and it's really interesting to read about that in a book but I work with neurodiversion people a lot within my job and I prefer my reads to not to be similar to <laughs> to my work uh, I use them as an escape and so it was just too close to home for me to enjoy it but I think that if you don't like like if you would prefer a contemporary book that with some romance in it and you would like some sapphic representation I'm sure you would really enjoy this and we have Mr Wrong Number by Lynn Painter I didn't realize that Lynn Painter is like one of the biggest book um, one of the biggest authors that people enjoy um this book is about Olivia who is kind of deemed like really unlucky she has a lot of really unlucky things happen to her like setting her flat on fire and she ends up moving in with her best friend's brother because she doesn't have anywhere else to stay and it's about that um I just found Olivia kind of annoying like she was she was quite look I'm old okay I'm, <laughs> I'm nearly 32 and Olivia's like 25 and I really felt her 25-ness um I actually felt like she read kind of 20 21 and she was just too young for me and I felt really old reading it <laughs> um I do own the second one on ebook so I'll read it on there but it's not one I need to own physically Next up we have Mr Perfect on Paper by Jean Meltzer. Uh, this one I was really sad not to like because I bought this in the States. Listen to that flop. Um, but unfortunately, yeah, I just didn't love it. And this one I should I really wanted to enjoy. It has Jewish representation. It's like the first romance I've read that was really focused with Jewish rep. Um, so this is about Dara who uh, is the owner of a, a Jewish dating app and she goes on a TV show to promote it and Chris is the presenter on there and the TV show is really struggling it's really failing and Dara's grandmother comes on the show with her and basically publicly announces Dara's like own personal list of what a perfect Jewish mate would look like and the the clip goes viral and so Chris asks Dara if she would be willing to make it a regular segment where they follow her around going on dates with her meeting her perfect Jewish husband um and it's about that and her realizing that maybe she doesn't need the perfect Jewish husband maybe she's looking for something else all along and I just didn't really like the writing style of this one I wasn't massively invested in the story and I was genuinely gutted and I was going to keep it because I bought it in Florida but that's not a reason to keep it <laughs> Then we have The Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren. Again, this is a really popular book. And I love uh, The Soulmate Equation by Christina Lauren. I really, really, really liked. This one, I just, it was too convenient for me. So this is about Olive and Ethan. And Olive's twin sister or older sister is getting married. And Ethan is the best man. And the two of them, for some reason, do not eat the food at the wedding. And Olive's sister is like a... a, a and it really experienced coupon cutter and so all of the wedding is done through like coupons or discounts and so is the honeymoon but they all get sick from eating the food other than olive and ethan so the honeymoon can't be cancelled because it's all on like vouchers and stuff so olive says just go on the honeymoon for me you and ethan go to make the most of it so they have to pretend to be married in order to go on the honeymoon and then the people that have just hired olive for a new job happen to be on this at this honeymoon like at the resort and then so is Ethan's ex-girlfriend and I just our ex-fiance it was like way too convenient on another level and I just 
I don't really think Ethan and Olive should have been together. Like, I don't like enemies to lovers particularly. It's just not a trope that I think really works. I don't, Grumpy Sunshine, fine. But enemies to lovers is not really for me. And this just, I was like, just don't bother. Just don't bother going together. <laughs> so not for me but a lot of people really like this one and we have the cozy cottage and island by julie kaplan and i do have the little swiss ski chalet but i haven't read that one um this one is about hannah who is a lawyer in the uk and she's known as really boring and everyone thinks she's really boring and she just doesn't do anything and she doesn't have a partner and she doesn't really have many friends so she decides to go on this trip to ireland to a cookery school which is something she's always wanted to do she just like ups and leaves and when she's at this hotel, she ends up having a one night stand with this guy called Connor uh, for kind of slightly ridiculous romance reasons, you know, romance book reasons. And she doesn't think she'll ever see him again. She just leaves him without saying goodbye. And then he happens to be the chef at the cookery school. Uh, I just didn't love the writing style of this. And also I felt like there was a lot of kind of attacking of Hannah for being like boring, straight laced. And as a boring, straight laced person, I don't want to read books about that. <laughs> um I do own the first one on ebook uh so I think I might get to that at some point because I was interested to read about Hannah's sister which is what the other one's about uh but yeah it's absolutely not one I would reread <laughs> then we have by the book by Jasmine Guillory this is the second book in the meant to be series which are Disney retellings and this was the Beauty and the Beast one and if you don't know Beauty and the Beast is my favorite film I love 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 Beauty and the Beast I don't love Jasmine Guillory's writing in this, unfortunately, though. Um, so it's about Isabel, who is a works for a publisher and she's never given the good job. She's really overlooked. And then she ends up taking on an assignment to go to what is his name? Bo, uh, to go to Bo, who's a, a celebrity in some way, I can't remember, a media personality to write his biography, like ghostwrite it for him or help him to write it because he's really over deadline. And she ends up having to stay with him for that reason. That's the Beauty and the Beast bit. I just, yeah, I just didn't like Jasmine's writing style. There's not really anything else to say about it because the story is kind of cute. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, but like the first one, the Cinderella one, which is by Julie Murphy, uh, really enjoyed that. The third one, Kiss the Girl by Zoraia Cordova. Oh my word. One of my favorite books of all time. So, so, so good. And Tangled Up in You, I think it's called, which is the Rapunzel one, comes out this year by Christina Lauren. Uh, so yeah, unfortunately, this one for me is just the weak one in the series. And as much as it's the Beauty and the Beast one, I've decided to part with it. Then we have Dating Dr. Dill by Nisha Sharma. I read this ages ago, so I might struggle a bit to talk about it. But um, Rima, her dad is selling the house that uh, they grew up in. And it's got all the memories of Rima's mum, who's passed away. She, They're trying to set her up with with men but she doesn't want to be set up with any of them she agrees with her dad she will be engaged with somebody for four months um if her dad will then keep the house and then that ends up being prem who is a doctor but like a heart doctor uh on a tv show and so they end up having like a fake a fake romance a fake dating i think it's a kind of enemies to lovers there was some spice in here um but the, again the writing style just wasn't for me and it has extracts from like a a, a articles interjected in here which i just didn't think added anything to the story so unfortunately not for me then we have summer at the castle cafe by donna ashcroft this is about alice whose mum has died and she kind of returns to the village her mum was from to make a new life there uh and there's a guy that she meets there and she falls in love this one is like um i don't like to say it but it is kind of a typical british uh, book in that it's like not particularly spicy it's a very much like small town in um Cornwall or something kind of book and I just didn't like the writing style of this one unfortunately so those are all the romances then let's get to the graphic novels so first up we have Pumpkin Heads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks this is a really really beloved graphic novel and I wanted to love it so much but I just didn't really feel invested in these characters I wasn't too bothered about following them around it's these two college students who are on their last summer working in the pumpkin field and is his name Josiah yeah Josiah is really in love with a girl who works on the candy floss or the popcorn stand or something and so uh, Deja is like trying to help him get with her um 
and it's about their like last adventures on the pumpkin farm um and the art's really funny it's got like a lot of really like funny quirks and these like in jokes which i really enjoyed but i just wasn't particularly invested in this story i thought it was a bit all over the place so sadly i'm parting with it but somebody's already bought this so i hope they, they enjoy it and i have the first two in the giant days series by john allison this is about um like a uk university experience the first one is fine it's kind of funny um it has some in jokes that i felt really on the outside of i don't know if i'm maybe not smart enough to get it or something like that but i enjoyed the first one fine the second one goes really really weird and i've read that the series gets even weirder after that and i thought i really didn't enjoy the second one i and this is a really long series i don't want to get invested in it the art's really really beautiful though and it is a very funny and accurate look at the uk university experience so i was gutted not to enjoy it more but yeah, I, it's not a series I'm going to get invested in. Then I have uh, Bell's Tale and The Beast Tale. And these are glorious. I get them. I get them. Um, these are Disney mangas, uh, which are of the stories in like of the remake Beauty and the Beast with Emma Watson not my favorite as a original Beauty and the Beast stan um but yeah these are full color mangas which tell that story from Belle's perspective and the Beast perspective um the art in these is not as good as I thought it would be and I think having read a bit more about it these were originally drawn I think smaller and then kind of blown up for these full color prints and the art quality I don't think is at the level that I like my art quality in um, in mangas and graphic novels. So I have decided to part with them, which is really gutting because they were really expensive. <laughs> They're like 19 pounds each. Um, so I'm really gutted. And these covers are glorious. Like that on a bookshelf would just look amazing. But I'm looking at them now, like, do I keep them? But I didn't enjoy them. I also, and I don't, I don't enjoy the retelling. So you know having I didn't actually realize it was so based on the like Emma Watson version but they look so good together it's hard to part with but I think it's the right thing to do then I have the sad ghost club one two and three um these are graphic novels about SG sad ghost who feels really lonely and ends up but decides to fight through their loneliness and go to a party and meet socks a fellow sad ghost and it's about them building a friendship and then wanting to make a sad ghost club and I wanted to love these so badly because as somebody who really is one of life's sad ghosts uh you know I have anxiety I have depression I'm a bit of a loner um these should have been something I really enjoyed but I I just didn't feel we really went anywhere with the story um obviously it does have like mental health representation which is good but I just felt that Honestly, I didn't like SG. That's kind of my main issue. I just didn't, I really didn't like SG. They were really um, forceful in trying to make everyone else join their friendship group. They were really forceful with Socks and not respecting when they needed some downtime. And I I thought if I was Socks, I would hate this. Um, so yeah, not for me, unfortunately, but these were already sold. So I hope that the person that gets these really enjoys them. The art's so cute, especially in the first one. It's got these really gorgeous landscapes that I really, really, really liked. But yeah, I was gutted not to enjoy these, but pleased to have sold them as a set. And I hope that the person that bought them really likes them. And then last up for books I have read, we have The Abandoned Empress by Ina, original story by Yuna. This is a um, full colour graphic novel, really cute art. This cover is one of my favourites ever. I don't know how well it will pick up, but it's got hollow foil on it. It's so gorgeous. Um, this is about Aristia La Monique, who is a child of a prophecy, and she's meant to marry the emperor's son. And then it turns out maybe she wasn't. This random other girl appears, and then they decide that she was the child of the prophecy. And so there's no life for Aristia now uh, because she's just going to be a consort instead. Like she's she's not going to be the fiance of the um, of the emperor's son. And then she is put on trial for something she didn't do and is murdered. And but then she's reborn in her 10 year old's body with basically a chance to to redo things a chance to have another go and maybe to see if she can end up the emperor's son the, em uh, the emperor's son's wife the emperor's son is vile he was disgusting like it's a real 
if you like a bully romance, I would, that's what I would call this. I did not like the way he treated her at all. It was really gross. <laughs> I didn't want to carry on. Um, so not for me, unfortunately, but I hope that somebody will like this. And as I say, the cover and the art are glorious. So genuinely gutted that I didn't like it. Okay, so now let's do the books that I haven't read, uh, but have decided to part with. So first up we have We All Fall Down by Rose Zabo. This is the Illumicrate special edition, which is beautiful. I mean, this this sprayed edge, glorious. Um, let me remind myself, oh, the, the um, dust jacket is plain. It's pen signed by the author. Uh, really, really pretty. Um, but the it doesn't have the best reviews. When I when I looked it up on Goodreads, I was like, oh, it's quite low. Um, and it's like a fantasy story about four queer people who are kind of fighting to find their place in the world. It sounds kind of interesting, but it's not the type of, um, it's just not the type of fantasy I read. Um, and somebody else has already bought this. So I really, really hope that they enjoy it. Because uh, as I say, it's one of the prettiest books I own. Uh, so I'm, I am devastated to part with it. But I, having read the synopsis through many times in trying to decide whether or not to keep this, I know it's not my type of fantasy story. Then I have the hardback of Tercio and Eleanor by Garth Nix, which I bought at Yauk because the... I mean, I've been intrigued by the series because I think the covers are stunning. I actually think this is the prettiest cover of all of them. And the uh, publisher that I was speaking to at Yauk was like, oh, you should actually, this is a, a prequel. They're like, you should actually read this before the main story because it actually gives a lot of insight into the main series. So I decided to buy it. And then Becca in the Books was reading this series and I think either DNF the first or the second. And the thing that she talked about as to why she DNF'd it, I was like, no, I that's why I would DNF. So I've just decided actually, as much as I love this cover, really, really love this cover, I don't think I need to get into this series. Um, so I've decided to unhaul it, but genuinely gutted because beautiful. Then we have The Little Swiss Ski Chalet by Julie Kaplan. We've already spoken about this because of the first one. I haven't read this one, but decided to part with both because I do have it on ebook if I want to read it. And I have The Magician's Guild by Trudy Canavan. So this is one of my fiance's favorite series. Well, when I said that though, he was like, it's not one of my favorite ever, um, but he thinks this is a series I would really like. Uh, so I bought the first one, um, but I then he owns them all on ebook and we share a Kindle um, library. So I was like, I don't need to collect these. They're not, I don't think these are like my favourite covers ever or anything. And I was like, I actually don't need to collect these. I bought this before I got my Kindle and I read everything physically. And now I have a Kindle. Um, I read more on my Kindle than I do physically. And I just thought this is just not where I need to spend my money is buying a series we already own on Kindle. So that's the only reason I have, uh, I'm going to be unhauling this. <laughs> that's actually the same reasons for these two as well. So this is The Lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch and The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I think both of these have sold. Um, Again, these are series that my fiance really, really loves. And he, again, really thinks I will like Lies of Loch Lamora. Uh, but I don't like these covers enough to own these. Um, <laughs> and again, he owns them all on ebook. So no need for me to own it physically. And Name of the Wind. I do like the cover for Name of the Wind. Um, I mean, they're really similar. These two look like they belong together. Um, I do really like the cover, but these are so chunky. Like if I was going to take this on a commute, I wouldn't bring the physical copy anyway. The writing is so small. Um, and I know that this is really beloved and I think I'd probably really love it. And Stuart thinks I'd really love it. I don't know that I want to read this before that final book is written. Like, why do I want to invest my time in in a book where the final book may never be written? So regardless, I don't need the physical copy because Stuart has the ebook. So if I want to read it, I'll read the ebook. Then I have A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Camera. Um, I didn't realise this was the third one when I bought it. Uh, so that really is the reason I'm unhauling it because I don't own the first two. And I actually hate this spine. Um, I'm sure people do like it, but like, it's so hollow. And like, when you're doing rainbow shelves, where'd you put hollow? That's not a colour. <laughs> it's every colour. Um, I hate the spine. So I've decided to part with this. I expect I would probably like Bridget Camera's writing. And I own Forging Silver Into Stars by Bridget Camera because the audition I have is beautiful. Um, but I think you have to read these before you read that. Let me know if, if you get this far in the video. Um, but I, this, I would not choose to have the physical copy of this. I'll, I'll read it on ebook. <laughs> then I have The Lost Girl King by Catherine Doyle. This is a beautiful exclusive Waterstones edition with gorgeous purple edges and purple foil. It's really pretty. This is a middle grade. So I watch Gavin Reads It All. And when I was first getting into booktube, Gavin's videos were like what convinced me to start a booktube. It, I watched all of Gavin's videos. And Gavin 
back then was really really into um into middle grade and I thought I would really love middle grade and there's some middle grade I've read and really enjoyed but I've also realized that ultimately as somebody who's 32 without children it's okay if I don't want to read middle grade there are lots of other adults and YAs I want to read so I've decided that now actually I really don't buy middle grade and I would really like to get through the middle grade that's on my shelf so it can kind of start hanging over me so there are a couple that I'm getting rid of that I really just don't think I will read this is one of them um because I've not really heard anybody talk about it. I, I own other books by Catherine Doyle because she writes like Twin Crowns and stuff. So I own all of those, I haven't read them. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've decided that I'm gonna unhaul this one, but hopefully um, a young person really enjoys that. And the same goes for Ghost Cloud by Michael Mann. This is one that Gavin has read and really enjoyed. But again, I've kind of read the story and I think I don't. I, it's okay, I can part with it um, as much as I love the covers of both of those. Um, then we have just a few more books. So I have Blood and Honey, which is the sequel to Serpent and Dove. We've already talked about it, so I don't need to go on about it. And then I have the Glendale Hall series by Victoria Walters. So I've read Coming Home to Glendale Hall and I have it on ebook. And I really liked it. And uh, so I decided to buy them all physically in a box set. Um, but now I've realised that actually I would just read these on ebook. Um, if I was going to read them now, I, I wouldn't read them physically. And so I've decided it's okay for me to part with the series, um, which is sad because they're really cute really cute covers. But I just decided they're just not ones I need to own physically. So that's it <laughs> i can't believe i finally filmed this um thank you so much if you've made it to this part of the video i really hope that you enjoyed hearing me talk about all of these books if you did enjoy this video i would really appreciate a like and if you haven't already i would love it if you would subscribe um i have hopefully some more planning and book content coming up so i hope that you'll enjoy that and as i say if there are any of these books that you are interested in picking up i have really good prices for them which i think is why they've sold so well on my vintage a lot of them have, as i say have already sold uh, but i hope that you do enjoy picking any of them up if there are any there that you enjoy uh, in the description i will also have a link to my instagram at my goodreads if you want to check out any more content from me goodreads is my most active social media so if you ever want to see what i'm reading and what i think of it in real time goodreads is the place to go otherwise i'll see you in my next video